Gulf Coast Grow Show is sponsored by Chevron Pasadena Refinery and is an extension of the Economic Alliance Houston Port Region, where our mission is to market and grow a vibrant regional economy. All right, hey guys, and welcome back to the Gulf Coast Grow Show. I'm your host, Jason Lee, and we are excited to kick off Season 8. I am joined today by Ms. Tiffany Steele. She is the Refinery General Manager for uh, Chevron, which is right down the street from us, and our brand new sponsors for our phenomenal studio that you guys are going to get to be a part of. So we cannot be more excited. We're having a ribbon cutting today. You're our guest of honor and uh, bringing you guys out to celebrate the kickoff of not only a great new season with a great lineup of guests, but also the beginning of a great partnership with Chevron. Um, we want to thank Sam Rayburn High School for the phenomenal work that they did in getting these signs produced for us. And I want to give a big shout out to Amanda, uh, the head of marketing here at the Economic Alliance for the work that she's done behind the scenes. Uh, it did, this was no easy undertaking for her and she's uh, doing her day-to-day -day job, but then behind the scenes has been putting this all together. So all the great production and the work and the things that go into this, we have a phenomenal team and uh, excited to kick this off. So, so Tiffany, we were chatting before the show. Um, you, you've got a phenomenal resume, uh, but it, it's kind of a cool story. I, I feel like uh, people in the uh, in the industry are often they're like military kids, right? <laughs> That's they true. bounce around and, and they have to go where, where where the business is or where the job takes them. And so true. you kind of have a, a history and kind of grew up and were cut for this, right? It's true. Almost, almost as if you were crafted for it. So we'd love to hear your story. And uh, if you'll just start off by just telling us a little bit about yourself. Sure, sure. So as you mentioned, I kind of grew up in this kind of lifestyle. So um, I've come full circle getting back to my Houston roots. I was uh, born here in League City. My uh, dad was a DuPont employee. And so um, we I've definitely grew up around this type of industry. And, and we moved around quite a bit growing up with his career, following him around. So lived in six different states, went to three different high schools. So I've had quite a different kind of an atypical upbringing I think and not a lot of people have had a chance to move around that much the military question comes up a lot when people find out I've lived in so many places oh were you military nope I was a chemical industry <laughs> and so um, so I ended up kind of following in his footsteps a little bit into the chemical engineering side of things and uh, and I started with Chevron in Northern California we have our Richmond refinery there and that's where I did an internship and started full-time and spent my first 11 years there and then that's when decided to start moving around with my career and uh then bounced to utah then mississippi and then now we're here in, in uh, the wow. houston area wow. yeah. what's your favorite oh houston obviously <laughs> obviously what's not to love about houston it's fun being back um kind of where my roots are my, my dad's retired in new Braunfels, so it's nice to be close oh, nice. to him yeah it's awesome and uh, the family loves being in a big city. We be, we we make it to a lot of Astros games, so we're we're definitely enjoying being. They here. picked a good time to be back, right? Houston, Sweet right? timing. The last couple Sweet of years, timing. it's a great time to be an Astros fan. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you, and um, and I think it's a great story because uh, you know, having started and, and planted your roots here, right? We, we are essentially a, a petrochemical environment, right? This right. economy is like its own little sub economy built around that industry. So to have you back. And playing such a significant role in it uh, is huge, and so we're glad to glad to have you. Yeah. Um, you. Talk to us a little bit about the the plan itself. So uh, the refinery, uh, we were talking before the show. It's it's been around for a little bit, huh? Yeah, uh, over a hundred years. Wow. So long history in, in Pasadena, that's for sure. Um, so Chevron came into the scene. We um, acquired from Petrobras in May of 2019. So so almost coming up on four years actually. Okay. Yeah and a lot of change at the time um, that we've been here. So it's a really strategic asset for Chevron and, and we're really part of a Texas-centric supply chain. The, the reason Pasadena was really attractive uh, to the company is that we have a large position in the Permian Basin in, in West Texas and a lot of our crew that we run comes from the Permian. So we're running our own Chevron barrels through the site and um, it allows us to put Chevron barrels into the marketplace here in the Houston area and in the Gulf Coast. And we also have, a, and I mentioned I worked on a Mississippi refinery. Um, it's nice to have some synergies and proximity to one of our other sites because we can share uh, products amongst each other, uh, resources with maintenance activities. It just allows us to be better optimized. So it's a really great fit for the for the area. Wow. And then you, when you think about that, so um, I think the so the idea and the strategic concept behind it was we're going to pick up this refinery, which again we've been at this for now almost four or five years. So this was. That I remember when this happened. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Uh, we were here, and, the, and and it was an exciting time. But now we're four years into it. 
talk to us about what the last four years has looked like. Yeah, that's a great question, and and there's been a lot of change. Um, so, so most notably, um, one I do want to talk about the safety. The our safety performance is something I'm very proud of, and it's at the forefront of our mind. Um, we are managing risk every day, and um, and I am very proud of our employees, um, the journey that we've been on, and the embracing of what Chevron calls our tenants of operation, which is really the framework for how we make decisions and operate safely and reliably every day. And so I'm super proud of that progress that we've um, continued to improve over the last four years since we've been here. Um, and also notable is really our improvement in our environmental performance. So just comparing uh, 2022 to 2021, we've had an over 70% reduction in our air emissions events. Wow. Right, it's significant. That's We've huge. put a lot of um, energy and focus into being a good community neighbor. Um, we get to operate in, in, a, in a great town, but we wanna be good neighbors to the people that we are around every day too. And so those are, those are very important statistics that I just wanna make sure people know that we put a lot of energy and heart into and that you know we're continuing to wanna to drive that performance in an even more positive direction going forward. Fantastic, and I would yeah. imagine over the years, uh, you've probably seen a huge um, uh, shift in that, right? Like there's just a level of execution at it because people, the, it's the bad things that make the news, yeah, right? Like right. the train derailment uh, in Pennsylvania and you know, all these things that will happen and all of a sudden it's all over the news and everybody's panicking. But, but they, what they forget are the countless thousands of hours of perfectly ran, uh, safe, fantastic environments that these people go into every single day and the right. amount of countless hours that you guys put into research and development to make sure that you stay safe. Right, it doesn't happen um, without a lot of effort, and, and and it's maybe not as glamorous to talk about the, the all the days that go really good. Right, um, and those are the, but those are the days that we definitely want to celebrate and highlight um, the, the good achievements of our folks. Absolutely, that's fantastic. So specifically, you guys came in, uh, I guess, to focus on this LTO or light type project, and I, I think that's what you were kind of mentioning around this little regionally focused yes. area. So yes. talk to us about that. Yes, sure. So, um, well, it's our light type oil project, um, and we call it LTO uh, for short, so I may go back and forth on that vernacular. And so this is a project that we're doing at the site, um, and we're starting execution now, actually. If, uh, if you drive by, you're going to see a lot more activity than maybe you've seen in the past. And it's basically going to allow us to run more crude um, through our crude unit, which is going to allow us to bring more barrels in from West Texas and run um, a higher crude throughput of our own barrels through the site, which then in turn is going to also allow us to have more product flexibility for our customers um, so that we can kind of shift um, as needed to where the demands are. And so the other really great benefit kind of tacking onto the comments that I was just making is that this also allows us to reduce our permitted emissions levels. So it's a really great project. Wow, that's that's huge. And so we were talking a little bit before the show, but I think you've got 600 employees at the refinery, right? Yes. And so right. we always talk about the impact, you know, for every job out there, there's seven jobs created in the local economy right. um, for somebody that's behind the gates. But in your case, we're talking about an economic stream that flows all the way over to the Permian, right? Where mm -hmm. Chevron's creating jobs. That's right. Pumping jobs all the way down here and then pumping jobs all the way across the region uh, and even into local states in the area uh, through gasoline and providing for those individuals that are even working at the gas stations, right? So yeah, we're talking about right. a massive- yeah. There's a big trickle uh, impact to the whole all economy. The, all the supply chain in between that. So uh, thank you, Chevron, right? So, <laughs> thank uh, you. Right? So, <laughs> thank uh, you. Good, good to know that you guys are making the impact that you're making. Um, talk to me, and I think you're kind of living proof of this. I think what we're, we, there's a, a buzzword, and I think it's an important buzzword. It's a couple of words, diversity diversity, and inclusion, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you're seeing a really big, strong push throughout industry in this. It's right. predominant in construction, uh, 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 manufacturing. What we're seeing a lot more of is women taking charge, and, and, and really, even in this organization, they really put a lot of emphasis on championing the women that are in the industry. So you're kind of a living example, a living, breathing example of one of our topics today. I'd love to kind of hear your take having kind of grown up in this industry and what you've seen from you know, 20 years ago to, to today, today. What's, tell me your, your insight on uh, diversity and inclusion. Yeah, no, th this is a great topic, Jason. Um, and, I'm, and I'm excited that you're asking me about it because um, I think diversity and inclusion is, is it's important to me on a personal level, it's important to Chevron as, part of our core values because we hire a lot of talented people. I mean, that's just, 
that's just get, gonna get you in the door, but to really unlock the potential, people have to feel embraced, they have to feel included, they have to feel respected and able to share um, their points of view and their opinions. And so, you know, when I think about diversity and inclusion and, and kind of my, through my own lens of being a, a woman in this industry, um, you know, 20 years ago, I didn't have a lot of examples of women in senior leadership positions. They were pretty few and far between. And so um, I think that that's one of the things that I have, um, I think is one of our greatest opportunities is having visible um, representation at all levels so that people can see that I, there's a path for me to get there. That person looks like me, I, I could have that someday. Right. And so while maybe I'm the first refinery manager at Pasadena that's been a female, I'm hoping I'm not the last one. Um, and so I think that, um, you know, one of the things that Chevron does really well is we, we invest in our, our, our local communities and STEM education is something that we put a lot of energy into. And that's really at all, at all levels, starting in kindergarten all the way through high school. And, you know, we obviously participate a lot with community colleges and, and local universities and, and all things of that nature as well. But um, having a, a talent pipeline, you gotta get people hooked young. Right. And um, show them that it's an option, that it's fun, that it's exciting, and uh, and when you have a good pipeline to come in with, then it just gives more options for people um, as they as they move up. They you gotta have you have to have a big talent pool to start with if you want to have a bigger talent pool at the top. Yeah, I think uh, you know I can speak as a girl dad um, whose whose daughter's entering that world where she's you know walking into high school and has to start figuring out what's next. Right. Um, getting to I guess as a father, step back and say, okay, your 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 options are truly unlimited, right? Meaning you can step into anything it is that you want these days, and there's not this kind of you know uh, stigma that would say, ah, eh, it's not really for women, right? right? Like right. these days, you're seeing it across the board, and it's fantastic, and that and that goes for people of color, people of, you know, of gender, right. it doesn't matter, but just really the added emphasis there is fantastic, and then to see people like yourself who started as an intern, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. then worked their way all, all the way up to running an entire refinery, over 600 people. I mean, that's, that's, what a great story. It's, uh, it's been pretty fun. It's not been without challenges, but it certainly has been fun. And, and to your point, um, so I've got three children of my own. Uh, my, my boys are 14 and 12, and my daughter is seven. And, um, you know, I obviously, I want my daughter to also feel that these are opportunities that are available to her, but, I think it's equally important for my sons to see this as well because um, my husband and I both work. We're balancing, and you know, some days better than others. How to make it all happen, um, you know? But they're also growing up in an environment where this is normal, right? right. This is normal, and so I think um, to your point, demystifying, destigmatizing. I think it's important for for all of them to see. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know what's harder, uh, three kids or 600 employees? So. <laughs> it's the kids. <laughs> I, can, I know the answer to that Easy peasy, right? It's That's an kids. easy answer. So um, now you were talking a lot about the community. And, and, and one of the things that I think is so fantastic about uh, really all uh, the refineries and plants and, and, and industries here in this region is there is a kind of a camaraderie and collaboration in the community, right? We, they don't just come here and plant their work create some jobs and then close the gates and you know you drive by and you never really get to see what's right. going on you get you guys get out into the community yeah. you were talking about that around building this pool and you know we built San Jack has really kind of built this refinery education process that's right. right around the corner from us and so there's really this culture that people kind of grow up here in Houston and they go okay there's opportunity for me in this but in order for you guys to achieve that it's not just putting your sign up you guys really actually get out and kind of make a difference. Can you talk to us a little bit about some of the kind of community things that you guys have been doing? Sure, um, it, and, and I'm glad you're, you're bringing this up too. I, I, our employees are very active in our community and, um, and, and there's a lot of different ways to get involved. And so I'd say the most recent one, actually, we had a great um, response to help with the tornado relief from the, the weather event that we had a few, I guess it's maybe a couple months ago now. Um, so not only did we make some financial donations to help with rebuild activities and to help families that were in you know some extreme conditions, mm -hmm. but you know we had employees and our employees' families out in the community helping do with roof repairs and debris cleanup, and you know we donated a bunch of supplies to help um, to help families with their cleanup activities as well. And so that's a very recent um, a, a recent activity that we took, but. 
you know, we've over the last several years, we've been really consistently contributing to um, the fill the bus, the school supply uh, drives that we do, the food drives in the community. You know, one of our most popular events at the facility is uh, is around the, the Christmas holidays and our bike drive. Uh, and oh, so wow. every year, every year they try to uh, raise the bar on what we did the last year. And so I think this year we were well over 100 bikes that the um, oh my gosh. that the employees uh, donated to uh, Wait, to help with this. This is the employees that are doing this, and wow. and it's really organically grown through them. Um, we kind of we just provide an opportunity. Here's here's an event we'd like to participate in, and the employees are off to the races with it. It's it's super fun to watch. That's fantastic. Yeah. that's got to be rewarding. It really yeah. is. It's it's exciting. Be able to it's see. Exciting. You know, you're doing something right in your culture when employees wake up and they don't just show up. Right. I mean, right. I mean, there's something there's yeah. something happening behind the gate. Something happening inside those core values that actually translate to the people. Um, if if you're doing it like that. You know, and, and our, our employees live here and we work here and we want to be part of the community and um, and and I see that come through in, in all these in all these examples that I'm just sharing that, you know, this is where we live and we live and breathe too. So you, our employees are definitely out and about. Fantastic. So um, as we kind of start getting ready to wrap up, would you mind sharing, is, is there anything that we you feel like maybe we didn't touch up on that you'd love to tell or you feel like you'd like to share in regards to Chevron's story? Honestly, I think I've hit a lot of the highlights that um, that we've got going on between the, the big project that we're executing and some of the, the recent improvements that I would say in our environmental performance. Those are just things that I really wanted um, to make sure that came across today. Okay, fantastic. And so for, let's say that there's a, uh, a woman in industry, right? And she's listening right now and she's, she's inspired uh, by you and the role that you serve. Um, what would you say are some of the contributing factors that have led you to success? Oh, interesting question. So one, okay, so one, I, I work for a company that I really believe in what we do and the importance of what we do. Um, energy is critical to making quality of life improved. And so um, I believe in what Chevron does. I believe in, the, in the, what we provide to economies, to people, and um, making affordable, reliable, ever cleaner energy. I, I just believe in what we do. So find a company that you believe in who they are, what they do, and their values. Um, so that makes it a lot easier to get up and go to work every day. Right. And so start there. Um, another thing is, is I took some interesting chances along the way. Um, deciding to start relocating with, with Chevron was a big decision for our family. Um, our boys were two and three years old when we did that. We moved away from family when we started moving, and those are not easy decisions to make. Um, and even some of the decisions that I've made, even while I've been within a site, have been a little bit like, ah, where is this going to go? Is this going to have a good outcome at the end? Um, so being willing to get out of my comfort zone a little bit has always led to better things and better learnings. I've grown through every opportunity that I've had. Sometimes. It was uncomfortable to start with, but looking back, I, I'm glad I did every single one of them. It may not have felt comfortable at the time, um, but it felt better at the end. Right. And I guess maybe the last thing I would leave you with too is that, um, you know, find people around you who are stronger than you at the things you want to get better at. Mm. Um, and that's kind of one of the things that I've looked for along the way. I think having some maybe self-recognition of where your gaps are or things you want to improve at um, and not being afraid to ask other people to help you with that, whether it's in a technical capacity or in just a leadership capacity. Um, I, you know, I think one of the things over the last handful of years that I wanted to be more comfortable in is, you know, being more decisive and getting to, um, you know, getting to decisions and making it really clear to folks where I wanted to go. And there's been a couple of people who I think exhibit that really strongly. Mm -hmm. And so, Finding people who are good at the things you want to be good at and right. learning from them. Those are maybe your, just a couple of things I would share. Those are uh, some powerful things. Okay. So, I mean, I think uh, if you're not growing and if you're not surrounding yourself by with great people, um, you're, you're you're not really maximizing your potential. So, this is uh, this is great stuff. Um, as far as uh, we always like to end with a little gratitude, right? Um, you know, I think it's great um, to to acknowledge and recognize the the folks that have been impactful to you. Um, is there anybody that you want to highlight specifically or anybody that you want to give a shout out to? 
Yeah, you know who I, I'd really like to give a shout out to is, um, so so when I first came to Pasadena Refinery the first time was uh, in the fall of 2020, and I was there for about a year as the operations manager, and then I took the, the assignment in downtown corporate offices for a little bit, and now I'm back. And, um, and I've only been back for a couple of months. And so one, I'd like to really thank the folks who are at the refinery for embracing me wholeheartedly coming back, mm. you know, getting me up to speed, um, telling me what's the current lay of the land, where, where are things going well, where do we need to put some attention. So I've been super grateful for, for the folks inside the gate. But um, also I'm really grateful for the support that we've gotten from the Pasadena community. Um, the success that we're having at the facility, I think has really been enabled and facilitated by the really warm reception that we received from Pasadena. And so just want to give them a big shout out too for, for helping facilitate Chevron coming into this great, great town. Fantastic, yeah. Well, you know, we live in a great city. Uh, uh, all Really all the cities surrounding it, it's, it's a phenomenal region. Uh, many of the Economic Alliance uh, plays such a significant role in bringing all these cities together and then creating the liaison between the community and what's happened behind the gates. And so um, it's proud to be a part of that. And I think there's such a great, uh, I mean, you could you could literally model the, the, the relationships and the work that's going on in just this region alone. And if we could just take that and, and duplicate that across our nation, uh, we'd probably be doing a pretty good job. It's pretty so, impressive. Yeah, I, I, don't, pretty I, impressive. I, I don't blame people for wanting to come out here come out here and stay because uh, when you get down here you realize how fantastic it really it's is. It's the truth. I'm a, I'm a testament to that. Yeah, so well, we hope you get to stick around for a while because we're going to enjoy too. having you around. So, Me too. Uh, Tiffany, it's been great chatting with you today. Uh, you, you gave us some great ads. Um, and, you know, we're, I, I don't think we could have had a better guest to really kick off and celebrate our inauguration of not only this season, but also of this studio. Uh, I mean, as I look around, it's just a humbling experience to think, uh, and, you know, in the last five years we've been able to get to a place where I mean, when we started this we, we had um, these little cheap mics and we were in the conference room in there with like a you know phone uh, camera uh, trying to figure out what we were going to do and we were I mean we've we've had so many different iterations of this thing to then now be here uh, walking in here and seeing all this fantastic work makes you realize um, uh, just how humble and grateful that we really are but also how fantastic it is to have uh, partners like yourself right guys it's just such a gift so um, for our audience, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, Tiffany, you've been fantastic. Thanks for having um, me. Yeah, you're, you, we've got a, a ribbon cutting today, so that's exciting. So you guys can uh, follow that stuff on social media. And then the rest of our group, you know, by the time you see this, actually the ribbon cutting will be done. Uh, but uh, <laughs> we, we want to uh, really acknowledge you and, and thank our audience for being so tuned in and staying connected for the last few years so that we could continue to produce great content. We would ask that you go to the Economic Alliance Port Regions website. There's a place under media where you can actually subscribe to all of our channels and stay in tune with the work and the things that we're doing. Um, this region has a phenomenal story to tell uh, with people like Tiffany, uh, people like the, or people that work within the cities behind the gates. There's so many people making an impact on this community um, and, it, and it transcends just what's happening here. It is actually having a global impact. It's actually having an impact where more people are trying to figure out how, companies like Chevron are saying, how do I create more in that area? Because like she mentioned earlier, this is a strategic decision. Mm -hmm. They've got billions of dollars to spend somewhere, and they said, let's go spend it here. in Texas because of this community. So again, we need your help in telling that story. So if you take this uh, you know, video, if uh, we need people like Tiffany uh, standing in front of uh, legions of women and telling them, hey, this is your chance. You've got to get into this industry, talking to these kids in these STEM schools. So we need to tell that story more often in this video or this show is a platform for us to be able to do that. So tune in, stay connected, and please share this with somebody that you know. And as always, if you have guests or content or recommendations for me, feel free to reach out to me at, our, uh, at LinkedIn and stay connected. So we look forward to seeing you guys in our next episode. Thanks.
Thanks for tuning in and be sure to go to the Economic Alliance Houston Port Region website and subscribe to our channels. And let's pay it forward by sharing the good news of what's happening in our region by passing this episode to somebody you know.